Gyanati Milantasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshur Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gura Venama Srimad Bhagavatam is the topmost exposition of the science of God. Generally people perceive of God as being very distant. Like a father in the Christian concept they they, they uh, stress on his being the father. But a very distant father who just is just a disciplinarian more or less, not much more than that. In what we call Hinduism, there are worship of so many gods and goddesses. And people claim to have various relationships with various gods and goddesses. Srimad Bhagavatam gives the complete exposition of the absolute truth and all loving. Srimad Bhagavatam, unlike any other scriptures, not only is the greatness of God described, but his sweetness is emphasized. If it is accepted that God is the supreme person, then his personality should also be supreme. That means he should be the best person. We see in the pastimes of Lord Ram, he is known as Maryada Purushottam. He is the best well-wisher of all his subjects and devotees. Krishna, who is non-different from Ram, is known as Lila Purushottam. Although Ram is the best for society at large, he, he regulates the whole society so everyone can live very peacefully. But for individual relationships, no one, uh, the, the Krishna, he is most intimate. The example given in this purport by Vishuddha Chakra Thakur might seem shocking. He says that in the conjugal relationship, there may be biting, which it's a kind of pain, and it causes a wound, but it is at the same time extremely pleasurable. So you may think, well, what's that got to do with religion? These things are not normally discussed among religious people. That's why people, they mostly, they have, you know, they'll go to the, they'll go to the temple with their wife and they'll be religious. But at home, it's uh, in the intimate relationship between husband and wife. Then uh, that's a, it's a different thing how they relate with their wife in the temple and how they relate with their wife intimately, it's something quite different. This is the special contribution of Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that he shows us how we can have an intimate, loving relationship with Krishna. Now, when we think of love, what do we think of? There is the love of a friend to a friend, or a son to a master, or a child to a parent. There is the love of the parent to the child. And there is the love in uh, husband-wife relationship or girlfriend-boyfriend. So we tend to think that relationship with God, that could be uh, that he is my father or maybe some kind of friendship. But the idea that we can love Krishna just like a, in a boyfriend-girlfriend relationship, that seems uh, not possible and even rather depraved. No. Some people blame Krishna. Even some people who claim to be devotees of Lord Rama, they blame Krishna as being immoral. Because this subject of Ananda Chinmaya Rasa, or the spiritual uh, relationship of lava to beloved in Krishna, is very difficult to understand. That's why even in those who are members of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Sampradaya, we say don't jump into that subject very quickly. Because the tendency to misunderstand it is very strong. But at the same time, we should know what is the specialty of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teachings. Well, there are many special things. That he's given such an easy and joyful process of God-realization by chanting the holy names of Krishna. That's very special. But uh, over and above that, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has come to distribute Unutajvala Rasa, Swabhakti Shriyam, which means the topmost resplendent rasa or humor of 
a love of himself madhur uh, what is that jodi garna haito tabe ki haito kemane dharitam de radhar mahima prema rasa shima jagate janato ke this uh, the poet basu ghosh says that if gor chaitanya mahaprabhu had not come then how could we have lived the glories of Srimati Radharani which are the ultimate limit of prem ras of the nectar of love of God who would have been able to understand that if it was not for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Madhura Brinda Bipina Madhuri Prabesha Chaturi Sha Baraja Jubatiya Bhavera Bhakati Shakati Hoito Ka he goes on to say that the uh loving exchanges of krishna with the gopis of vrindavan in the beautiful forest groves of vrindavan that is the uh, the, the bhava bhakti the feeling full devotion of the gopis who could have understood that without chaitanya mahaprabhu's mercy so chaitanya mahaprabhu came to distribute Rasatmika bhakti. That means bhakti in which rasa is emphasized. To enter into that one has to first of all become free from attraction from mundane rasa. As long as we are attracted to mundane, uh, this uh, form, touch, taste, smell and sound, then we cannot appreciate what, you, what is transcendental form touch taste smell and sound that's rupa sparsha what is that uh, form rupa touch sparsha sound shabda smell gandha and the other one uh, sight yes drishya so uh, bhishma did he also in these prayers we will see that he is praising the gopis of vrindavan you'll find in a few more verses that is mentioned so uh but he himself is in a different mood of devotion to krishna that uh he's in the mood of a servant but a very intimate servant and krishna he also enjoys what is called viraras or the uh activities of a hero one of the most famous verses in bhagavad gita that one line is there vinashaya to dushkrita i come to destroy the rascals so krishna does that as varaha dev he kills hiranyaksha as narasimha dev he kills hiranyakashipu as rama he kills ravana and so on but we may think well why does he have to come if he's god he can just wish them dead and they'll be finished well there wouldn't have been much fun if he, if just by bhagwan vishnu's wish hiranyakashipu just dropped dead on the spot then there would be no nrsimha leela i was describing yesterday how nrsimha dev looked very beautiful with the bloody intestines of hiranyakashipu around his mane So that is one kind of pleasure for the Lord. He enjoys fighting. So there's no fighting in the spiritual world. There's no demons in the spiritual world. So he comes to the material world for these pastimes. So all kinds of pleasure are there within Krishna. He's uh, Rasovai Saha. The absolute, the Upanishad states that the supreme is constituted of rasa. So even logically we should expect that the supreme he is the most extreme enjoyer if we, we may see a materialistic person they they're fully dedicated to enjoying this material world they're dressed in all the most uh, expensive fashionable clothes wearing lots of expensive jewelry and have you know very expensive house and very most expensive car so i may think well this person is completely totally materialistic 
But then we see that uh, Krishna, he's dressed in the best clothes. He's the he's enjoying extremely. But he is this supreme spiritualist. As the goal of spiritual life is Krishna to understand that this is suitable for Krishna, is not suitable for anyone else. One can only enjoy this material world by exploiting others. And by trying to enjoy this material world, one's heart becomes very hard. He only thinks, me, 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 I, me and mine, ahamma meti. But Krishna, he's the supreme enjoyer, but his heart is not hard, it is very soft. He possesses everything, but he shares everything with all his devotees. And he is bhakta vatsala. He is very much inclined to his devotees. He looks after them very nicely. How he looks after them in this material world is often not understood by non-devotees. Because he often takes away devotees' material opulence. Lord Krishna says that to him who I am merciful to, I gradually remove their wealth. Then his relatives see that he's useless. He's got his complete failure, lost all his money. They abandon him. So Krishna may do that, not in every case. But... The devotee sees this is Krishna's mercy to make me attached to him only. Krishna is known as a kinchana gochara, one who is available to those who have, who consider nothing in this material world mine. Janmai Shvarya Shruta Shrib here, Edhamana Madhapuman, Naivarhat Yavidhatum Vai, Tvam a kinchana gochara. Kunti Devi said, that persons who are very much in, interested in improving their material position, they're proud of their high birth, their money, their bodily beauty, and their learning, such persons are bewildered by such things, and therefore they cannot understand you, Krishna, because you, Krishna, are a kinchana gochara. You are available to those who have nothing of this material world. So the the beauty, the love, the sweetness of Krishna can be appreciated by those who have no more uh, tendency towards trying to appreciate the beauty and the love and the sweetness of this material world. People may think, well, this is very harsh. People are, you see, the young men are leaving their families and abandoning them to serve Krishna. But uh, by doing so, they come to the position, Vasudhaiva Kutumbaka. They're seeing the whole world as one's family. I am Nijaparo Veti. Ganana Laghu Sam. Those who think this is mine and that belongs to someone else. That is the calculation of someone of very small mindedness. Udara charitana nam vasudhaiva kutumbakam. One who is Uda, one who is a broader outlook. He sees the whole world is my friend. How is that? When we recognize that Krishna is the supreme father, then we understand that my family is not limited to a few people, but everyone is a member of the family. So Bhishma Dev is in a very intimate relationship with Krishna that he can shoot arrows at Krishna and Krishna appreciates that. That Bhishma is my devotee. When Bhishma Dev is lying on the bed of arrows, Krishna comes to visit him and offers respect to him. There are so many demons who shot arrows at Krishna. Bhishma Dev, he's not a demon. His motive is different. He was uh, fighting and trying to kill Arjuna but at the same time, he actually had great love for Arjuna and Krishna. So that may seem very strange, but it's, uh, it just goes to show how complex this world is. That uh, due to circumstances, Bhishma, who only desired the benefit of Arjuna, was fighting against him and trying to kill him. 
So this is a warning to avoid becoming entangled in bad association. Of course, this is all the leela of the Lord. Still, there are important lessons to be learned here. That because Bhishma Dev was intimately associated with the Kauravas, so he felt obligated to fight on their behalf. Even though his heart was with Arjuna, he felt my duty is with Duryodhana. So there's an important lesson there that we should associate with devotees. If we associate with non-devotees, we become obliged to them. So we shall pray to Bhishma Dev, he is a great devotee, we shall pray that we can uh, begin to appreciate the beauty and sweetness of Krishna, at least to some extent, as Bhishma Dev is fully absorbed in that appreciation. Srimad Bhagavatam is not simply a book. It is a book. You can see it's made of paper, printed with pages. It's a book. Just any book. Srimad Bhagavatam is Krishna in the form of a book. He is present here if we want him to be. And Bhishma Dev and so many great devotees are present here. So we can pray for their mercy, that we can uh, be blessed with the bhakti that they have so that we can also begin to develop in the same way. Is there any question about this? What's the question? Yeah, well, if we give, if we attempt to spread Krishna consciousness to others, then we won't be taking their association, we'll be giving the association of our acharyas. So we should try to give Krishna consciousness to others. And if we're, if we're obliged to mix with so many non-devotees, but we should, uh, as much as possible, associate, take association of devotees. That will help to protect us and purify us. The brahmacharis are also going out and preaching in this world. Uh, they sh- they also, we, sh- we have to come back and spend time for hearing and chanting about Krishna. In family life, one has to take responsibility for the family members. We should not neglect that responsibility. And uh, at the same time, remember that this is all temporary. And therefore, keep our sight clearly set on the transcendental goal of getting out of this material world and going to Krishna. Who was that yesterday? He asked the question about Sangapani. He was right. I made a mistake. Actually. He was Ratangapani. I was getting mixed up. Maybe because we have Sarangapani here. The name of Krishna who carries the broken chariot wheel is Ratangapani. Sarangapani. Saranga means, uh, has various meanings. It means a lotus. I looked it up in the dictionary. Lotus, conch, or bow. So that's also a name for Krishna. But that's not who carries the broken chariot wheel. Chakrapani, that specifically means Sudarshan Chakra. And Ratangapani is the word for Krishna who carries the broken chariot wheel. So you can tell him when you see him again. Then, uh, what else do I want to say? Yeah, this morning you might have been surprised that after the Tulsi RT was offered, I took the Panchapatra out, changed the water and brought it back. So I'm just going to explain why I did that. Because one of the flower petals that was being offered had fallen in that. So then it all becomes prasadi water, you could say. So that shouldn't be offered again to Tulsi. That's why I changed it. Then uh, Badra Singh Prabhu may be wondering, I was, he was playing cartels and I was saying, don't do like that. <laughs> so you may wonder why. Someone else started playing and they were doing the same, one, two, three. So what was the difference? Who can tell what's the difference? It's a point of playing in time, keeping the tal. Those who don't know there's no way you can explain. It's like, you know, they just can't understand. But it has to, there's a, on the beat, Hare Krishna. And then if it's out of time, it's just, it's described in Garga Samhita. It actually, they're the personalities of the Raga and Ragini. They become physically hurt by doing that, by playing out of time. So it's it's practically impossible to explain, but if you if you have some musical sense, you can understand. So I was saying yesterday, everything here is very simple and sweet. So 
The kirtan is done with a lot of feeling, but some technique should be there also. Just like you know, one can cook with a lot of bhakti, but at the same time you should know how to cook. Otherwise, it won't be so pleasing to the Lord. If you think, well, the dal or the, the sambar tastes nice with salt in If there's no salt, it's not good. So let me put more salt. One kilo of salt in one liter of sambar. You may think then that's more bhakti, but it's wrong. It'll taste without well, harm. So one should know the techniques. What? Deen Dayal, you were learning to play Madanga, you never finished learning, is it? Huh? Maybe you should send someone to learn to play Madanga. If they can learn to play with more. I don't know, it sounds maybe more. It's more like the uh, Thai Pusam beat or something. They're playing here. Yeah. It's more like that, very. Very simple and strong, but the, we we sing Shankha uh, Bhaje Gantha Bhaje Modhur Modhur Modhur. What is that? Shankha Bhaje Gantha Bhaje Modhur Modhur. No, that was the other line. Shankha Bhaje Gantha Bhaje Bhaje Karat Modhur Amre Danga. There's this sweetness. South Indian Madanga is like hard sound, but okay. Bengali Madanga is a sweet sound. So there's a technique how to play it sweetly also. I used to play, but due to some pain in the hands, I stopped playing. <laughs> anyway, these are techniques. These, they can be learned gradually. Then, anything else now? No. Hmm? Yeah, okay. I can have an evening class also. And yeah. tomorrow morning, then I'll go to the phone. Well, you should do something. If you're, if you're doing regularly, you could do it at another time or do something. Generally, we, at home, we don't rec- recommend there should be very elaborate deity worship. Yeah, Keep right. it simple. All right, so Hare Krishna. Okay.